That comes to the RTVS line where every second of the day an artist is live. B-O-B. We are inside of I Matter Health Lifestyle All About You. You see her, the one and only Mad You Activist artist, Stephanie Tough Love Brown. Hey, hey, hey. And hey, 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 hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to speak all over y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the latest from uh, G-Terror. Let me know. Brand new single. Yes, indeed, man. Uh, good stuff, man. Right. So what is the process that you go through when you're, when you're penning your next single? Um... I'm always thinking something original that will be catchy, you know, and um, something I know people will like, but I'm always focused on making the music original and pleasing myself musically. Because mm -hmm. if, I, if I don't like it, I'm not going to push it like I'm supposed to, and I know that much about music, so I always make sure that I'm satisfied with the song I'm writing, you know, so I don't just write really fast, I take my time and carve out the lyrics, you know. Mm -hmm. put them together kind of like a mathematical way you know I, I don't just put lyrics together like line after line a little mathematics to it you know right style so, it so, out yeah. so let's have this conversation because we had it earlier in regards to um as an artist and you're attempting to get record spins and airplay at right. various radio stations and musical outlets right so obviously you know that there's a process you've been doing this for a long time and uh, i just basically uh, before i came in here this afternoon i had a conversation with a manager of an artist Right. And uh, they submitted some music, mm -hmm. but obviously the music didn't fit our mantra, which is feel good music. So if the entire family can't listen to the song, then right. we're not going to play it. Right. That's just our mantra. Right. That's our sense of responsibility. You know, um, so we're not attempting to compete with the commercial mm -hmm. radio stations right. in regards to how they go about playing the music. True. You know, we have a sense of uh, responsibility to our global audience to say that, look, we're going to play music that resonates with an entire family, that has some, some value to it, that right. has some meaning to it. You know, so, but you've, you've come up against that where you've gone to a radio station and they tell you, well, you know, uh, we can't play because of certain lyrics and things mm -hmm. like that. And you know, that's our, that's our philosophy right. here in regards of the content that we, um, we put on the air. So how do you go about doing that when you're creating? Because obviously as an artist, we're never attempting to, um, you know, taint your integrity as right, an artist, right, right, right. change you, who you are. Right. But you also understand that in order to get those spins or that airplay, that sometimes you can't just only make that, that original copy. You also have to make a version that's going to garner clean, you that airplay right. at a radio station like, let's say, for instance, here at Bronco mm -hmm. Art Radio. So how do you go through that process? Well, the, the easiest way is always, when you, no matter what songs you're making, what you're creating, you always have a clean version. Right. That's number one. And then with me now, I'm, di I'm diversifying my portfolio, uh, my catalog, I should say. Mm -hmm. I'm diversifying my... I, I say liversify because I don't like the dive the diver. Right. Right. I want to live, live in the verse. Right. <laughs> so I liversify my port my um catalog of music and you know pretty much do all types of music. That way that I have more chances of breaking into different uh charts, whether reggae or hip hop or whatever charts it is. Right. You know I have clean music so it could be played for the family. It could be played anywhere. I got music that could be played on a Sunday. You know, on a Sunday after church. Right. Love to give. Can't stop thinking of you. Let me know. Mm -hmm. Those are songs I created where I know I would get play every single day because I'm connected to a lot of DJs all over the world. From Canada to Jamaica to UK, Ghana, um, Nigeria, Zimbabwe. We have, we have DJs all over the world, really. Switzerland, everywhere. You know, Netherlands. So pretty much I have to send them clean music too. Right. You know, and it's the same thing. Everywhere you go, it's the same thing. Some places don't recognize um, certain curse words as curse words exactly. that are in the U.S. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the the bum, the, that one, the Jamaican yeah, word the everybody like. The donkey's butt. The, the <laughs> buckla. <Right. laughs> the buckla. <laughs> they don't, in certain places, that gets away. So it's like different everywhere. So you and just there, have. There are stations here in, in the United that States where you can get away with uh, right. saying the, the A double S word. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you always had to format your stuff to where you could win one way or the other. Right. You know, I, or always have the clean version. Because once you're on a certain level, they're going to play it if, it's, if you got a clean version, regardless, right. wherever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about getting it popping. So I have the clean version ready. That's the best way to go about that. Mm -hmm. but, it, but it's important for artists to know that that once you're making a track, that you only, just don't only make that one track. Right. You know, think about the other radio stations right. that as soon as you give it to them and then they hear those lyrics or the content, yeah. they're like, well, we can't play this. True. You know, so you have to have a, a backup plan. So that's why we always tell people the radio edit. Yeah. And a radio edit just doesn't mean that you take out a word where it's still there. Clean up. Though, you know it's what I mean? Yeah. You can use a different word to still represent whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's true. You, that's that's just a yeah, clean up version. Pretty much, um, it's so much uh, different formats and places people play music apart from just radio. Mm -hmm. That's why some artists, they don't really care because they're more tending to the streets. Exactly. But mm -hmm. there's a level above that because if you want to really make it in a music career, you're gonna ha you, you will have to have what you need to, 
to go forward, you know? Right. So have the clean music ready. Definitely, that's the best way to do it, you know? Right. Have clean so, music. So who were some of your inspirations, man? My number one inspiration was is Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. um, to this day, still. A uh, lot, of, lot of inspirations. Beanie Man, Bounty Killer. Um, Wolib. Wolib. Mm -hmm. people, uh, people you never heard about. Tanto Metro. Uh, Pliers and Shaka Demos. Mm -hmm. Murder, she wrote. Murder, Murder she wrote. Mm -hmm. Them so them two um Wooly for people, Ninja Man, Shabba Ranks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a lot of inspirations in music, you know. Mm -hmm. Even Tupac, definitely Tupac Shakur, Notorious B.I.G. I grew up listening to them. I used to fall asleep listening to them in my bed, just knocked out listening to hip hop music. So um a whole lot, man. Even Jill Scott, I listen to Alicia Keys, everybody. I'm inspired by all music right. that's been out, that's good. I'm inspired by all of it, so it, it all comes comes into me like a sponge, and I just take from what I can to build myself as an artist. Whatever good I see in another artist, mm -hmm. I learn my little piece here and take that. You know, say okay, I'm yeah. forward with that. Okay, yeah, man. Right. So, so what's what's gonna be the uh, the G Terra legacy? Because you have two young girls, man, <laughs> that are definitely gonna be looking up to daddy. Definitely, so what is it that uh, you wanna leave to them. Everything, mm -hmm. everything I have is theirs. None, none of what I'm doing is mine. Nothing that I'm. Even what you see me with right now is not mine. It's, it's theirs. You know, I am theirs. Everything that I'm creating is theirs. My children are, are me. They're me. So pretty much everything I have is going to be left for my kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the loved ones. So my, them, my, my kids, my two daughters right now, one on the way, and one 10 years old, and my future kids, they're all going to get everything that I'm creating so right now. Plans, all the music. Right, right. <laughs> all these, these hundred songs that I got right now out, it's all their songs. Right. They're, they're going to manage the business. I'm going to teach them along the way how to, you know, um, make the contacts. I'm going to give them all my contacts and show them how to work the music business and keep those songs on the radio, getting in royalties from radio and sales. Right. And show them how to work the music market. So long after I'm gone, they could still be like, hey, this is my daddy's stuff. And it's a... Right. It's a legacy, like you just said, and okay. it'll be the legacy they could. You see them advertisements with um CDs, or yeah. you know, like the old school do it. Oh you yeah, ever see yeah, the old yeah, school yeah. put yeah. what they put their CDs together. Yeah, they gonna be doing that for me okay. like next fifty years probably. Yeah, so putting each other to work. Okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> for real. I mean, they gonna need it better right. than me that who, who came in the world who had to bust bust it down and go get it because right. our parents never really left us a legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted to, but they couldn't because times are so hard, and where they're from, they didn't have the advantage. You know, they were born in poverty. So some of them were trying to come out of poverty and barely made it out. To be middle class doesn't mean you're out of poverty. Some middle right. class people are broke right now. Can barely get by on their bills, you know. The bills, it, it's like a vampire system. The way it sucks the money right back out of you. The little money you just made, boom, it's right back in the bills. Mm -hmm. So it's like, a, it's like a vampire leeching on you. And that happened to my mom and my dad. So I'm here creating a legacy. I'm trying to break that. I'm trying to break that up, the obstacles that's been holding our people back. Right. From moving forward and having financial freedom, so that they could go and make moves, you you know, investments, take money and build their own businesses, stuff like that, you know, stuff that we never had in our early twenties or like some kids do, you know, they have that advantage. But yeah, I'm trying to create that for my kids, basically. We should all do that for our children, I think. Absolutely. Okay. Leave or leave businesses with them, so they don't come into the world and get turned eighteen, nineteen, and searching for a job to go work for some other company and build their business. Mm -hmm. Why not build your own business so your kids could continue building on your business? So you have, you know, what about us? Okay. Our land, our business, our farm, our food, you know, our own clean water sources, our own energy, you know, that type of stuff. Okay. Uh -huh. see, see, there's a politician in there somewhere. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, when, when I say politician, don't take it in the I, negative I'm, conversation. I'm not disagreeing with you. I, yeah. I'm just like, I just didn't like it. You see how quick I said, nah, it wasn't even me. It was something that snapped like... <laughs> That wasn't even me. I just don't like politicians to the point where like, nah, like, I wasn't even trying. Like, I wasn't even trying. It just came out like, nah. I'm like, sorry, bro. My bad. No, but I'm saying that there are, there are a lot of people like yourselves that, uh, with your voice yeah. and your convictions, that you can definitely make a, a, a huge difference. And I think that being an artist in, in many ways, yeah. that that platform, once you're garnered that platform, mm -hmm. that right. if it's utilized properly, it will benefit and it can affect change right. as well, too, man. Um, so, so what do you want your fans to know about you that they don't know about you right now? I want my fans to know that I'm one of the realest person, one of the realest artists they could listen to because everything I speak about comes from the reality. I don't rap about fiction. I don't make any type of songs about, um, just floss in our cars and materialistic things. You know, um, my music is focused more on open pe opening people's minds to listen. 
and to also the lyrical effect that I, I put on my songs. Like the next song is gonna be very lyrical, so I, I get it out then. But um, I want them to know that I'm serious, very serious about music. You know, I don't take it over the limit where I'm gonna explode or nothing like that. You know, I have a sense of humor. I like to laugh, but um, I really love music. My passion in, in it is infinite. I, I'm over passionate about music. I just can't stop. You know, I, I remember dreaming this life and I woke up to a reality. I made it a reality by keep creating. That's all you gotta do. Everything you could dream of, you can make it a reality by just um, doing the actions instead of thinking, 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 thinking. Thinking would drive you crazy. Okay. Do the actions. If you could see it and it's positive, do it. Do it. Make moves, you know? Right. Just like the queen. Right? So. Yes, indeed.